All right, well, I'm suggesting that we go for like a French crop, but the fringe is kind of going to come up. So we've got a little bit of a hair pattern in that's coming across. I think it'll complement it well. If I take some of the, some of the weight out this side, yeah. it'll kind of stand higher in the middle and it'll look nice and sharp. Down to about 0.5 on the sides, I'd say. Come through the preetal ridge with the two. You have a nice shape on the sides of it as well. Awesome. Beard, I'd say we sh I'd suggest that we taper in around, we taper in around here. So kind of go for a deepish taper and then I'll just put some nice shape on it and kind of square it at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah? Sounds good. Cool. So we've got number two on, number two guard. This is going to give us a nice base for this haircut. We're going to put our first baseline in around the preetal ridge here. So it's going to be flicking out. Uh, I'm not going to go straight. I'm going to kind of put a little bit of an arch into this as well. So I'm just going to follow that all the way around the head. Uh, I'm going to try and get rid of as much of that grey as possible as well. So I'm blend that out. And then what I'm going to do is, the way I'm going to blend this is I'm going to leave all this weight through here. And I'm just going to work down the guards instead of putting a, uh, a guideline in a second guideline. So again, I'm not going to come square. I'm not going to take all the weight off. I'm going to leave some weight through the crown. And that's going to help kind of create a good shape. You can see that from the sides. So we're going to do the same on this side and we're going to follow that, that baseline. So we're taking that grey off. Massive bus just kept right off. <laughs> <laughs> just cast, just yeah, cast a shadow over everything. <laughs> so now I've, I've dropped this to a 175. So it's a one and a half guard, and it's half open. So it's a 175. I'm just going to knock out a little bit lower than that. And this bottom hair here, this actually works as my guide of where I've been. So this is a nice smooth blend without putting too many guidelines in. You've just got your first guideline as a two. And then you just work down. You can kind of hear when the when the clip is cutting, and you're just pulling out uh, in like a C motion. And again, I'm keeping that shape there. So we've got a little, almost like a smile shape at the back. We haven't come straight across. And then I'm going to drop that down, so it's going to be fully closed now. So it's a one and a half. I can start to take a little bit of this weight here. Again, I'm flicking out as soon as I hear it cutting in a C motion. Right, we've got a one guard and we're going to have it in a open position so it's one and a half and i'm going to start doing the same just going to flick out a little bit lower as soon as i hear it cutting again it's it's being removed from the head and that's c motion so i want to leave this bit of hair here because that's literally going to be 0 0.5 so i'm staying i'm keeping at least a couple of centimeters of hair to remove in a 0 0.5 with the 0.5 Right, we've got a point. We've got a, uh, a half guard now, so it's 0.5 guard. It's going to be half open, so it's in a 0.75 position, and then we're going to work down just through this bulk of hair. So I'm just taking that little bit of hair there, and as it comes over the ear, I'm going to be dropping it down with the shape of the head. If I follow here with this line, I'm going to go back into my work here. So I've got to follow the shape of the head as I come round. It's important as well not to move the lever at this point because it's not a fixed system. So the lever, if you move it, you're not going to, be able to put it back in the same position. So I see some people moving, manoeuvring through this point with the handle, with the lever, sorry. And I, I think it's easy to get lost if you, if you manoeuvre with it. So I'll hold it in that same position all the way around. Okay, so we've got a 0.5, yeah. no guard, and we're going to start knocking out this last bit of hair, and then we're going to just clean up the blend anywhere where there's a little bit of weight through it. It's like a big reveal, mate. Changing the angle of the clipper as well, when I come around the ear, instead of coming flat to the head. I can tilt it slightly and it gives me a little bit more range through, through the uh, behind the ear. Uh, I'm not clipping any hair and I'm not taking anything from above the ear either. <clears throat> Does it feel nice having the sides of your head just took back to normal mate? 
instead of having that mushroom. It's weird how hair does that, doesn't it? It just kind of mushrooms out. Yeah, I know. You, your, your hair's good. Your hair sits down nice. It lies. Mine, mine just comes straight out. Oh, thank you, Dave. Growing your hair out is hard, though, dude. Sometimes it's just not for some people. Okay, so we're going to do the same here. You can see the shape as well. It's left. So that's our point 0.5. We're, we're not coming in straight sections here. We're keeping with the contour of the head. So I'm just going to come back over again with the 0.5. Just clear out here. I'm not too worried about this again, like I said. So we'll we'll deal with this area in a second. So to get this nice and smooth now, I'll just drop your head down for me, brother. I'll move to a 1.25. And I'll start removing anywhere that I can see, like a slight weight. Slight weight line. Again, I'm flicking off the head. Trying not to put, go too far into it, because I'm just going to chase up. Any weight, and you're looking for kind of any colour, any colour change. Cause sometimes when the hair's the same length, but it's a different dark, like dark hair stick out, and you can kind of pick at them with a one guard and remove any weight. And sometimes when you're up here, you can't see what you're what you're looking at. You've got to come down level with the fade or under it to see where does any build up of weight. Another technique, you can switch to a scissor and you can just point cut any dark patches or blemishes just to break them up slightly. Well, I don't want to go too, too deep into the, na the hairline here. I'm trying to keep it natural as possible. And then we're going to have a nice hook. I'm laughing in the end. And I'm going to keep this, there's a lot of hair here, so I'm going to, what I'm going to do is instead of going straight into it, I'm going to push up to it and see where it looks natural, see where it suits. So if you, if you go too far into it straight away, you're kind of stuck with that line. So if you build up to that, you'll see where it feels natural. For me, it feels good around about there, I'd say. So you want this to be like a ski slope. You want it to come across and then drop down. If you go too far in here, it becomes too feminine. The haircut will have a feminine look to it. So keep it nice and wide. That's looking more natural. So I'm going to cut through the middle, straight through. I'm going to take a center profile. <laughs> This is going to set the length of my haircut all the way through. And I'm going to pull up the middle. So yeah, we're looking for that for this graduation now. It's longer at the front and it's coming over and it's getting shorter at the back. And then to follow that line, I'll take all the hair one way. And then starting from the back, I'm just going to follow that. Take in sections from front to back. Sorry, from back to front. And that's your guide. You're going to follow that guide to the side to match the side. That's my guide again. So I can still I can clearly see the guide, and I'm just going to work it through. Follow it all the way around the head. Okay, now I'm going to work with palm to face and I'm going to just join. I'm going to connect the sides using this method. Okay, so 
Okay, so we've come up through the centre, and now we're going to come up through the sides, and we're going to keep a round shape. And I'm going to work that into the sides here. This is something that people commonly do, they commonly miss, and these bits sit long. But we don't really want that, we want that to follow round. Same on this side. Okay, and now we're going to texture. So whilst the hair's wet, we're going to grab a nice sharp scissor and we're going to start splicing the hair. And then we're going to go backwards into the hair. So we're going to rest one blade. And this is just another texturizing technique. We want to get as much as we can into here without losing any length. Okay, so we've got Spice Citrus Sea Salt Spray. We're going to give it a little shake, find it works better once you've given it a little bit of a shake. And then also, something I've been doing with this lately, is once I've applied it to the hair, I've been almost kind of creating a lather with it. So normally I'd just comb it in and dry it in. But this time, I'm going to show you what I do. So we're just going to dry it with fingertips. And this is going to kind of reveal that graduation as well as it, as it dries in. <clears throat> I think that sea salt spray is probably my favourite styling product to use on this kind of haircut. Uh, that sea salt spray as well, it kind of changes the texture of the hair. So it will take your hair from feeling quite dry and quite flat. And it will actually almost put like structure into the hair. <clears throat> Have you used it before dude? Sea salt no, spray? No. Really good product for this kind of hairstyle and this length as well. You'll kind of see the effects of it in a sec. And we're looking for that choppy kind of just got out of bed look. Coming through there. I'm going to work with the direction of the hair there, so I'm going to get to lie down just through the sides. And then that's where we're going to change the direction at the front. So we're going to blend in through the sides now. I always like the hair to be dry at this point. And this is where keeping that length in the crown helps as well, because now I've actually got something to blend into. If I'd have gone too high with that, I'd be blending up here. And I don't want to be doing that, I want to be blending just here. <clears throat> That's the shape we're looking for now. It's kind of got, it's built up from the sides. It's got something supporting it. And it looks banging, mate. <laughs> this is great for beards as well. So we're just going to dry that in. It's going to give us a bit of hold when we're cutting the beard. It's going to make life a bit easier because when you push the beard around with a clipper, it's not going to move. So I'm actually using this brush as well. I'm pushing it into, I'm kind of back combing the hair and pulling it out so that it keeps a little bit of volume in there as well. Instead of pulling it straight down. So when we came to the beard on the side burn, we said we were going to deal with that later. So this is where we're going to do that. So number two guard, and it's going to be open so it's in a two and a half position. And we're going to come through the bottom of the beard, take out that bulk. And then we're going to work down. So we're going to go to a one and a half. As if you're fading hair really, but obviously we're heading upwards into the hairline from the beard. Gives you a nice deep taper. You can do the same on the other side. Then we're going to hand sculpt that. And we're flicking out. Down to a two. One and a half, so it's a one guard, fully open. Again, we're blending into the hairline, back into the fade. Okay, so we're working on the cheek line now. 
So we're going to come above and work down. And then we're going to keep a nice hook here. So like a half moon crescent shape. And then what we're going to do is work this little bit of weight. I don't want to lose too much from the bottom. But I'm going to try and make it look a little bit more solid. Although it's a little bit uncomfortable, mate. But, uh, I'll hold you there for a couple of minutes, okay? So we're going to go straight through the chin. Take off what's basically a little bit weak there. And we're looking for a nice, solid line again. This is the angle that I can check that. So I can check straight through there. As soon as I go back, I can look from the side profile. Sorry, this is a very crucial bit. I try not to talk here. <laughs> it makes it quite awkward. Okay, now we're going to check this from the side profile. That's what we're looking for. And then we're going to work down. Just take a little bit of weight up there. But the sea salt spray that we put in earlier, that's holding it really nice now. So anytime I cut a hair, the hair's just not moving. It's getting cut because it's got some hold on it. This is what I mean about pushing the beard around. If, uh, if, you, if you don't put a product in it before you cut it. Okay, now we're just going to get that last little bit of shape. So this is where you kind of take off anything you've pushed to the edge. So there's a few hairs here like, that we've just kind of pushed down. So we're just going to take those hairs off. Voila! Okay, dude, have a little look in the mirror at that. See if you like the shape. So I'll take around one, two, three, four, five, six. Six drops. And then I don't want this to be too straight. I kind of want the beard to look a little bit rough. Almost like it's backcombed. And that's kind of what we're looking for. How's that feeling, Chris? Nice. Yeah? Okay.